Thanks for joining us. You've tuned in to Arirang's Within the Frame. I'm Handan in Seoul. The world was once concerned about the ecological and social impact of overpopulation. Now things are quite different with rapidly falling birth rates across continents thwarting countries into uncharted territory of economic and social ramifications. And today's Within the Frame, we look into the global trend of population decline and explore strategies to address dwindling birth rates with a particular their focus on South Korea, home to the world's lowest fertility rate. For that, we have Choi Hyun Sun, professor of public administration at Myeongji University, joining us virtually tonight. It's great to see you again. How are you? Thanks for having me. And for another perspective on the pressing topic, we also have Willem Adema, senior economist at the OECD Social Policy Department, joining us from Paris. It's so great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. It's a pl great pleasure. All right, let's kick things off with you, Dr. Adema. According to recent statistics, over three quarters of countries across the globe will not have a high enough fertility rates to maintain population stability by 2050. Is the low birth rate becoming a global problem? It is uh, maybe not a problem, but it certainly is an issue and it poses uh, many challenges uh, to um, to future societies, um, I should say. In, in most OECD countries, fertility rates have uh, fallen um, to 1.5 children per woman on average across the OECD. In Korea, it is um, uh, 0.7. Uh, and as you said, the lowest uh, across the world. In many uh, other countries, um, the trend is the same. Um, but there are still some countries who have fertility rates um, above replacement rates. There are 2.1 uh, children per woman. Uh, and these include um, Egypt, Ethiopia, but also uh, the Philippines, um, India. So, I mean, the, the growth, the population growth that there is, is um, uh, largely in, in Africa and in some uh, poorer uh, countries in Asia. Um, the projections are that the current global total fertility rate of about 2.2 uh, children per, uh, per woman will, will decline to 1.6 um, in 2100. So, uh, and, and that will uh, bring about uh, um, an important shift in population growth across the globe with a focus on um, population growth in, in low income countries rather than in higher and middle income countries. So it's not a major problem yet with uh, some countries still showing uh, robust population growth, but uh, many uh, demographers warn that uh, the global fertility rate will drop below the point needed to keep population constant. Uh, in fact, China has seen a population decline for two straight years and population growth in India, the world's most populous country, is also slowing, which is quite worrisome. Uh, and what's noteworthy, Professor Che, is that uh, the top 15 richest countries are all experiencing a population decline. How do you see the correlation between wealth and birth rates in developed nations? Yeah, as you explained, the 15 developed countries, the wealthiest countries, has the lowest fertility rate. Uh, so it is a very the, uh, uh, maybe sudden, uh, maybe it's turning about the relationship between the wealth and the low fertility rate. Uh, I think the main reason, the main reason of this the, uh, decline, uh, probably uh, lifestyles change, wealth gives more options about to the especially young generation they can have a, a new lifestyle they can concentrate on the urban context urban the uh, place also they have uh, maybe too much fun there are Netflix and open AI and clubs and many cultural things also they have uh, maybe too much information so they they can worry a lot, okay? So I think this is life changes, especially they are uh, exposed too much to the urbanism. So we change it from the, our rural society to the, the urban society. But uh, real impact right now, the 
the dramatic decline, maybe probably because of the too competitive society. Life is very difficult in terms of the economy. I think the, that the mainism cr comes from the neoliberalism. The neoliberalism started from the 1980s until the uh, 2010. Uh, they focus more on the competitive society because we can make a more efficient society. I think that that's the maybe good uh, uh, regime for the for a while. But in make our society become the more competitive to each other, we cannot trust each other. That becomes many young generation realize we can maybe have uh, uh, maybe just uh, rather than the family and the children, we can have a very independent lifestyle. So I think that it is a maybe uh, 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 tr tr uh, trend of the many countries. As uh, Dr. Adena already pointed out, many countries follow the the path on trajectory of the developed country. Well, it has been uh, well known to economists and uh, demographers alike that wealthy nations show remarkable decline in their fertility rate, especially with higher education among women, while poorer countries continue to see high fertility rates. And this is exactly the case in Africa, uh, Dr. Adema, as you alluded to. Africa has the world's highest total fertility rate of over 4.3. Uh, and given the current pace, a quarter of the global population is expected to live in Africa by 2050. Give us your analysis of the transformation uh, in the global population landscape. Well, I mean, it, it, there's two um, perspectives uh, on each side of the scale. Uh, one is the perspective of aging societies, aging populations, where there will be increased concerns about uh, and pressure on health uh, systems, health insurance and health infrastructure. There will be uh, increased uh, demand for social security pensions. Um, so there will be a lot of pressure on uh, providing for the uh, elderly population by a smaller group of um, people of working age. Um, now, um, there are uh, different um, policy issues that can be considered to, to um, um, address that situation. Uh, there are issues around um, improving labor productivity of the working age population so that it is easier for them to, to provide for the larger group of elderly. There, is, there are uh, issues around um, getting more people of underrepresented groups in the labor force, women, young people. Uh, um, there are issues around extending working life and healthy working life. Um, and there is the issue of migration. And that makes the link then with the lower, with the poorer um, group of countries. They um, start um, now with, with relatively high fertility rates. These are expected to come down uh, in, in most countries. Um, but still, there will be uh, young societies um, and the challenge for these societies will be to ensure education, but also to uh, address issues around health, uh, child mortality, um, and uh, improving uh, reproductive health. So the challenges for those uh, countries uh, will be very different. Then again, um, they will have a growing population, they have a growing potential uh, population in terms of uh, labor supply, but also in terms of demand. And, and Africa is seen in, in many countries as a potential uh, new market. Um, the other aspect of, uh, of this is uh, not all gloom and doom, uh, reduced population growth uh, may give the environment a break and uh, reduce the stress on uh, environmental resources. And um, so uh, there are uh, positive uh, sides to the, um, to the um, decline in population growth. Meanwhile, Professor Che, President Yoon has vowed to create a new ministry dedicated to tackling Korea's plummeting birth rate, which will be uh, led by the deputy prime minister. How would the new ministry compare to the existing Presidential Committee on Aging Society and Population Policy? 
Yes, we have uh, already the uh, committee on uh, regarding uh, the maybe aging society and the population policy. But uh, maybe President Yoon bowed the uh, maybe new administrator with uh, maybe more more power. I think that that's the maybe uh, another good way of the we can control the future of our population. But uh, maybe. Uh, not only the good sign, but uh, I think the uh, Yoon, uh, President Yoon has already uh, has uh, two years passed, and I think the, right now the uh, to making the new the uh, minister, ministry minister, uh, ministry is uh, we must change revise the the government structure act in the our the uh, Congress, which means is uh, uh, we. We, the government should cooperate with very well with the, uh, the, maybe the current uh, uh, People's Power Party plus the uh, Democratic Party, which is uh, uh, is uh, uh, working together and uh, more communication. We can maybe effectively we can make a new minister and the new minister has a power has a, they have more budget and they have a, maybe the uh, their authority to make a policy and implement implement and to get the feedback and they can make another cycle that is a very good but the take time is a big problem so i think the uh, the success of the this uh, new the uh, minister the our president just talk it is better of the time the, the, the this is key the important issue so i think the spend more time to change our government structure act or we can just uh, more effectively Make the, our current committee to the really working in the uh, the ch change the environment for the maybe future population. So I think that this is the like a egg or chicken problem. But the real issue is uh, the working well. This is the real problem. Our president, our the bureaucracy should work well. Well, the new ministry uh, is expected to be granted greater executional and budgetary authority as well, and hopefully that will help to a certain extent. Now, looking deeper into the government's birth rate policies, Dr. Adama, the UN administration has vowed to seek balanced regional development and various social reforms to prevent overcompetition. And this, as high private education costs and long working hours are cited as some of the main reasons dragging down Korea's birth rate, which uh, you've also pointed out. Out in past interviews. What are your thoughts on the UN administration's birth rate policies? Well, I mean, um, I think the, the, the issues around the cost of education and uh, the uncertainties in the labor market and, and the growing uh, group of non-regular workers are well documented. Uh, the regional development angle is an interesting one. Uh, if you look at, um, and, and it shows the various keys um, that that uh, can be used to address this issue. Uh, if you look at um, Sejong City, it has a, a, a higher um, total fertility rate than many other places in Korea. And uh, that just points to the different um, factors at play here. Uh, in Sejong City, you have uh, a lot of civil servants, researchers, uh, people with relatively good employment conditions and uh, working hours that are not uh, totally incompatible with family life. Um, Sejong City in, uh, has a lower um, housing cost than many other places um, in, in Korea. Uh, and uh, a perfectly uh, well-functioning um, school system. Um, so um, all these issues uh, need to be addressed. And so I can see the um, uh, the virtues of, of trying to to balance your um, regional development and, and get more um, children and more families and more um, family-friendly uh, conducive working conditions outside Seoul, um, which is um, a huge uh, and fairly overcrowded place. So I can I can see the the um, uh, perspective of regional balancing, uh, but as uh, Professor Che uh, said, uh, a time is of the essence, and and this may take uh, uh, quite a bit of time to um, to um, materialize. 
And Professor Chad, the government is also looking into providing a large sum of money of up to 100 million won for every childbirth. And according to a recent survey, over 60% of respondents said the cash payout motivates them to have a child. Is this a plausible idea, though? What do you think? I I asked myself, maybe probably uh, 10, 100 million won probably is a very good uh, way of the, yes, come on, we can have, a, you can have a children, we will give the money. Uh, the, surprisingly, the, uh, this survey conducted by the Anti-Corruption and the Civilized Commission, and then the, uh, the major, the respondent is uh, from the AG 30s, which is uh, really the, they can choose, they can uh, have a children or they uh, maybe doesn't have something like that. But the 62.6% the say yes, it, uh, it changes. I mean, probably we can making another decisions. Uh, maybe we, we, we want, we don't want baby, but right now we can have a baby, something like that. So this is a, a maybe amazing, maybe uh, maybe some some kind of the prize to the new the things. But the problem is uh, why people choose that kind of the monetary unconventional way of the cash can maybe bring the people and uh, making more attention. I think that this is a uh, how difficult our life is. It is uh, evidence about. Uh, uh, people normally cannot have a child or children with their income right now. So this is a government should realize our people had has no enough economic asset to make or the educate or the raise our children. So the uh, problem is uh, give the uh, hundred million a uh, one or we can make our society more better and then they don't need any more money, uh, maybe much money uh, to raise our children. That's the key point, okay? So the, I think the, uh, I, either way is fine. I think that we can give the money to the uh, individual, you can uh, spend your money, or at the same time, uh, another way really the, uh, uh, much better is uh, our society getting uh, uh, maybe the how our society making the our uh, making our society better. I think that both is a very uh, uh, difficult choice. I think. And staying with you, Dr. Chair, Korea's current social systems, including national pension, health insurance, uh -huh. and defense, are all based on a fertility rate projection of 1.09. Would Korea be able to raise the rate from the current? 0 0.682, 1.09, and uh, you've mentioned that the, the time is of the essence, and so how long would it take? Uh, so the government announced that 2049, uh, we will have a 1.09 uh, birth rate, and that uh, making our uh, uh, maybe society sustainable. I think that that's a like a pre assumption. I think the uh, how we can make that is not enough right now. The, our policy, our resource, our the way of the strategy is not that well the uh, organized and prepared. And we just announced uh, two thousand forty nine. We will have one point nine zero. Every also our the. Uh, uh, defense and the pension, every the social system is uh, made on that debt. I think the only way we can making the 2049, we have uh, that kind of the high, no, just to get better uh, birth rate is a uh, immigration policy. So we have uh, more uh, aggressive the immigration policy. U.S. United States has a uh, birth rate is uh, getting low and low, but uh, their immigration is a uh, sustain their society right now and probably till the 2040 something like that. So I think the we government should realize. Birth rate uh, is uh, not getting higher enough 2049 at all, I think. But uh, we must choose more aggressive way of the immigration. And uh, Dr. Adema, as uh, Professor Chair alluded to, could active immigration policy be a viable solution to tackling population decline in the U.S. as well as in South Korea? Well, it's, it's part of the parcel of, of, uh, of measures. Um, it's not just uh, the the only measure that uh, should be taken. As I said, um, there are uh, other ways to um, improve uh, labor supply uh, by improving labor productivity, by um, 
getting more underrepresented groups in the labor market, uh, more more women, more young people, more older workers in 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 the labor market, uh, extend uh, the working life, uh, the healthy working life of uh, of citizens uh, will make a contribution. Um, Pro-natalist, family-friendly policies can help. Uh, they will make a positive contribution. Uh, policies uh, across the world which help uh, reduce the cost of uh, raising children uh, to parents uh, will be part of the solution, but on their own, um, uh, whether it uh, involves childcare policies or housing policies, uh, it will have to address various aspects, but on their own, um, it is very unlikely that they will raise um, the birth rate to the replacement rate. Then the other part of the puzzle is migration. Migration is already on a uh, all-time high in the um, OECD. There were uh, 145 uh, million migrants in the OECD in 2022. Um, the population um, characteristics uh, already say that um, just over 10% of the population in OECD countries is foreign born. So uh, migration is widely regarded as um, a important uh, tool uh, to address uh, the uh, aging um, population, the demographic change in in OECD countries, but maybe not as much in Korea as elsewhere in the OECD. And uh, I think that OECD, that Korea can uh, make progress in this area. So migration could be uh, an important tool in tackling demographic challenges in some countries, but uh, it's not. It is not, and it shouldn't be, the only solution. We need, we're going to need a lot more discussions on various domains as well. All right, uh, we'll leave things there for tonight. Thank you so much, Dr. Adema and Professor Che, for sharing your valuable insights. Thank you. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back with more same time on Thursday. Goodbye for now.